This is the conclusion of the, 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 the saga of Samson. It comes in James. Uh, when you pray this week, pray for Craig's grandson. His grandson, they thought they had, they had, they had him in the hospital thinking that he had uh, uh, a blockage or something. They didn't know what it was. And then they just said, oh, he may have an appendicitis after, after a couple of weeks uh, here in town. Uh, they determined that's what it is. And so they rushed him up to, to UW in Madison. And Madison said, yeah, we need to do an immediate surgery because they should have recognized this two weeks ago. And his little body is so full of infection, uh, rumor. Uh, and so uh, 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 he, he's blessed that it hasn't ruptured, but he has so much infection in his body that they have to get, they have to deal with the infection before they can even go in and do surgery. So uh, remember him, remember him, pray. He talked to me just before service and said that uh, <clears throat> they put they put uh, a, uh, a stent in uh, to drain, and that, that they've already seen uh, a lot of infection. Uh, and that he was, he was he was thankful. He was thankful. He felt confident that they had, that they that, that they were watching over him, and that the good Lord had. Before we before we jump into uh, to uh, our observations, I want I want to kind of do you, uh, do a quick uh, note about next week. Uh, <clears throat> you have a pastor that is considered an expository preacher, which simply means that I like to take a passage, work through that passage, and to dig out as much information from that passage as I possibly can. Uh, but there are times in our studies that we need to be taught. And topical. The difference is that topical basically takes a topic, and it, and it moves throughout the Bible to find that to find to find that topic. So next week's study is going to be uh, uh, a little bit different. We start on angels. Uh, the notes that you're going to get will look something like this. It'll be a it'll be a series series of of, 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 of text that you can go through and and like on this one I have what does these scriptures reveal about angels and we'll we'll tackle it that way. So it'll be a little bit different. I think it's I think it's a good uh, good uh, method of study that that we must uh, that that we need to in time to time develop the skill set to be able to to uh, to be able to tackle. So so uh, be back with us next week as we jump into angels and see see both angels of darkness and angels of light and see what the Word of God tells us about about angels. Uh, he has some teachers that are interested in that. So I told are them. they? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. But I don't know. I, they may just watch it on YouTube, but they're very, very interested in that. Oh, fantastic. It's a topic no, they've all been interested in. Yeah. It, it's, a, it, 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 it's interesting. It's, it's one of those things that, that the Bible speaks a lot about, but doesn't necessarily put a floodlight on. 
you know, uh, there's not the book of angels. There's not, you know, uh, and, uh, yeah, and so, 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 but, but, but cons considering, considering the, uh, the, the, the times that we live in, uh, early Pentecostals believe something that I thought was interesting. You know, they believe that when the, 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 the uh, in the early 1900s, when they begin to see a resurgence of, 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 of gifts of the spirit and manifestations and things like that, they, tr they, they truly believe, as, as I do, that, that it's a sign of the end times, that God will bring, will, will, re will bring a reviving of many of the things that we see in the book of Acts, I believe this. And one of the things that we see in the book of Acts, and we see actually throughout human history, is that whenever there is something significant going on, you see an increase in the activity of the angelic. You see an increase in the activity of angels among us. And so uh, uh, it wouldn't surprise me as, that, as we get closer to that day of the Lord period that we have a few more interactions uh, <coughs> with the angelic. Uh, uh, so yes, uh, not only feel free to tell them, they're more than welcome to, to, to be with us. Friendly news. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Any... Um, any observations on our text? Yes, ma'am. I know it's like even with um, Samson's last request, it's still on the whole vengeance thing instead of allowing God to really like use him as far as like like it's God's strength. Like let me like let me like have strength so I can have revenge one more time. Right. Right. Yeah. It's uh, there, there's still that tinge of flesh there. Mm -hmm. and, and I think there, are, there always will be that tinge of flesh in us. The, the, uh, and and we've got to keep in mind, too, that this is an Old Testament thing where the inner working of the Holy Spirit is not as prevalent in their lives. Yes? Mm -hmm. um, as far as I can recall, this is the old first time that he ever prayed. He, he called out at Lehi when he was thirsty, mm -hmm. uh, oh, right. but not to the depth and not to the extent that he did he Absolutely, he was almost in that prayer. Was almost sarcastic. You know, you're gonna let me die. You know, that, that kind of that kind of that kind of prayer. Yes, I. But this prayer here is not a prayer for praise. It's a prayer of possession. Mm -hmm. He wants to be compensated for his two lives. He yeah. He he asked he asked he asked for he asked that the Lord may enable him to avenge his eyes. Yes, yeah. See, so yes. it's it's a prayer of possession for him. It, mm. it, it, it won't bring his eyes back, but it will oh, bring yeah. uh, some type of a, uh, you might say, an equal, equalness for mm -hmm. what, you know, to, to balance out what they did to it. Yeah. Yeah, James. I mean, in the, the law, it does say an eye for an eye and all that. I wouldn't say him taking out the, all these people is the same value as his two eyes. Mm -hmm. but <laughs> yeah, exactly. I That's do right. think this is what God in the end kind of intended him to do is take out I, 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 I do too as you as we as we'll see a little bit uh, earlier uh, 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 God had his purpose for it mm -hmm. and that I think I think oftentimes that God will use us even when our motives aren't 100 percent even when our motives are are not are not quite are not quite there you know uh, and uh, uh, but this the closest to a pure heart that Samson ever had it really, it really is. You know, if, if you can get what ninety five point six percent of pure purity of heart, it seems that he, uh, that he, that he was, he was getting there. Although, like you pointed out, it's still, you can still hear, you can still hear Samson's voice, can't you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Any other observations? One thing that struck me so much when I, when I first read it was is that they brought him because that the whole intent of this was to celebrate to their God mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. they had that they had conquered Samson. That's, that's and, right. And how quickly right. that would turn on. And that and 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 the biggest mistakes that the Philistines made was that. Of all the things that they did, it was that. Because up until now it was Samson versus the Philistines. They made it Jehovah versus Dagon. <laughs> and when they did that, and when they began to mock the name of God in it, then they basically called on his judgment. They basically called on him to prove himself. And oh, did he. 
<laughs> you know, uh, and he and he used he used that that broken instrument that 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 he, that he, he used in, in and we're going to see we're going to see really more evidence of, of that in 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 in, in, in the uh, in the circumstances that speak specifically to to that clash between the two. The part where they said um, God delivered him into our hands, the one who multiplied our dead, and then when he did the end, he killed more at that time than he did ever before. That's right, that's right, that's right. I was wondering what his performance was. He was bound in chains. What was it as anger coming out that they mocked? And made him more angry. I mean, what was his performance? Yeah. The, 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 he to perform to perform before them. I, I, I think it. I think it. I think it was a performance of humiliation, kind, kind of like kind of like you know, you, like the clowns in the circus. Bring him out, push him around. Make, you know, he can't see. Look, he doesn't have any eyes in his eye sockets. You know, look, a child is. You know, uh, you know, hey, Samson over here. Over, here, you know. It, 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 se it seems that it seems that it was a, it seems that it was a it was it seems that it was a jesting mockery of of, of uh, you know who is this man now you know uh, you look how strong we Philistines are yes he asked I think didn't he say he asked a boy or something mm -hmm. so they didn't take him seriously anymore they wouldn't let a young boy around him you know but that, that's right it, it was it was so obvious I believe it was so obvious that what Samson had, he didn't have. That they were not, no longer afraid uh, of Samson to, to the extent that they didn't even have guards nearby. They just had, had a little boy. Here, take, take Samson to the, to, uh, to the temple. Here, take Samson back to, his, to, his, uh, to, the, uh, to the cell, you know, take him, take him back to where. So it's, that shows you the, the, the depth of how far, how far this thing had gone. Well, he wasn't bound. I, I stuck the bounding as when he was when he was bound to the grinder. Yes. yes. But at that time, no, like Eric said, he was being led around by a little boy. By a boy. Yeah. And that's what they were mocking there. Is what are you yeah. going to do now? That, that we don't even have to. We don't. We're not. He's no longer a concern of ours at all. Yeah. That's a. That's a. That's good. Marco word. Polo. That's right. That's right. <laughs> I just I remember. Seeing a movie about Samson and, and that one, they had him chained to the pillars and he pulled on the chain. Nobody did a Bible story incorrect like Hollywood. I, I, yeah, I, yeah, no, I, no I, doubt about that's it. That's for sure. That's for sure. Especially Noah by NBC. It, it infuriated me. I turned it off after the first one. I, I said, I said, I said, I this like is, to fly on the wall. I said, this is it. This is, there's a difference in being incorrect and there's another difference in being completely off course in that. Uh, the, 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 don't don't bother watching Noah with uh, uh, I, forget, I forget who it was it's some star but, but it was uh, uh, but yeah it was it infuriated me uh, James you heard, uh, um, I thought it was interesting that it mentions in verse 22 that his hair was growing back without any other statement it's like kind of a foreshadowing I thought it's interesting it, was it, 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 it is it, it is it's a uh, uh, and I think it uh, uh, I, I think at that point in the story that that the symbolism of the hair shifts. Mm -hmm. I really I believe it means something different now, and and we'll and we'll kind of, we'll kind of get in get into that. But I, I mean I believe it was mentioned for a specific reason, but not for the reason that others have kind of read into it. You know, um, uh, you know, because other scriptures down a little further down proves that that wasn't the, that wasn't the case. Any other observations? Yes, Anna. I noticed that, like like. The verse 31, like you mentioned, his brothers and all his father's household found his body and buried him in the same tomb that his father was buried in. Right, right, right. That's a, and that's a, that's a, that's a beautiful picture. And uh, tonight we're gonna uh, uh, we're gonna be looking at the road to restoration, and I believe that's part of the restoration that God provides. Uh, Samson, Samson, there. Yes, sir. I was going to say, it, it, when you read the scriptures, you'll, you'll notice that uh, if, if a king was evil, he, he was not buried with the kings who had served God. They kept him separate. Mm -hmm. And uh, and they, they would just take the bones 
and take them back yeah. and yeah. place the, the, the new ones in there of the, of the person who died, you know, uh, in, in, in the tomb with, with the other people who had passed on. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and it was a, uh, it was an honorable thing to be buried with people who had served God. People of honor. That's, that's right. Honor. That's yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's, uh, and, and, uh, and I think one of the greatest rewards that Samson gets uh, uh, is not even in the Old Testament. <laughs> and and we, we, gotta, we gotta just touch, touch on that, touch on that too, uh, tonight. Yes, James? Um, it says they took him to Gaza. I thought, wasn't Gaza not a major, was it, it wasn't their capital, right? The Philistine capital? Gaza was, to be honest, I'm not sure if it was a capital. I know it was a major city. Yeah. Did, yeah, do you remember here? Do you remember primary. hearing about what's that now? Uh, I think it was a primary city. That's it. Be yeah. like New York is here. New York's not our capital, right? But New York is uh, basically the center of. The and I think Gaza was a coastal city too. Yeah. And if you got to understand, yeah. the Philistines yeah. is a big yeah. trade people. Yeah, trade. They, yeah. they, they, yeah. they were actually Philistines is called Sea Peoples. Yeah, uh, by historians. Yeah, but we said, said they were from the, the, the island of Crete, mm -hmm. which was further up the Mediterranean Sea there. So that's probably why, if Gaza wasn't their capital, which you know, the Bible won't necessarily bring out, you know, capital is too much of But if Gaza uh, wasn't, it was it was a major. C can you remember in the story where Gaza has already had? Yeah, when he took the gates, I was wondering if that was yeah. partly why they took him there. Was kind of like getting back at him for that. It's like, look, we conquered the guy that took our gate. That's right. You That's know? right. And, I, and I, I really believe that was part of the uh, 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 the motivation there is is just the humiliation. You know, y'all remember this guy? You remember him walking up the mountain, the side of the hill with with our gates? Now look at him. Any other option? Yes, absolutely. I was just going to say, when 9-11 when occurred, that shocked the entire planet. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because the, they never thought that, uh, the, we, we had never been uh, attacked before 9-11 mm -hmm. by a That's foreign right. country. Well, Pearl Harbor. Harbor. Except for Pearl Harbor, yeah. Yeah, yeah Pearl Harbor. Well, Pearl Harbor, but not in this country. Not in the continental Yeah, but like Pearl Harbor was the main part of the United yeah. States. Then it was a probably maybe a, I don't even know if it was a territory. Well, and it was a military base, not a civilian. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Building. Military base. Kind of but as far as the continental United States, nobody had ever. Uh, the, the British had tried it, mm -hmm. you know, in 1815, but uh, they 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 got pushed back too, you know. So yeah, absolutely. They had done some damage to the White House and the Capitol, but that was it was minor. And again, if, if you read the story about that uh, attack on D.C., God rose up a standard against them. He said a, a tornado stopped their attack oh, and, wow. and, and blew away a lot of their armaments. They, they, they couldn't uh, wage a full-scale attack against D.C. because of the tornado. Oh, that's right. That's and it kind of came up out of nowhere. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Now the, now, the world, you know, at that time, the, the, the people who weren't believers didn't see it that way, but the people who, who knew who God was, they said, hey, this was an act of God. Otherwise, they may have been come to this state. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Any, anyone else? Do you have an observation? I thought it was interesting that, that and I don't know how he knew this, but he knew that there was pillars that supporting the temple. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it was just a common you know, architecture back then that was the way they tended to do it or if he yeah. had been in the place before. You know, and you know, the, the, the Bible tells us the events that took place but the Bible doesn't tell us every detail. Yeah. He, could, he could have been talking to the child. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tell me what the makeup of the room is. You know, mm -hmm. Tell me, tell me uh, how close is, is, the, is the columns together. You know, and he could have been in Dagon's temple before. Yeah, that's what I was wondering. Mm -hmm. Maybe he had been in it before. Yeah, yeah, because he, did. you know, he didn't have a had a problem being places where he should be. Mm -hmm. Anybody, anybody, anybody else? Uh, yes, sir. I just want to go ahead here a little bit. Uh, the, the, the Philistines weren't good at history. You know, uh, mm -hmm. you know, the history says 
if you don't observe your history, you're doomed to repeat it. Oh, yes, well, yes. if you'll notice later on when David, uh, when they conquer the Ark of the Covenant, mm -hmm. they take it and they put it in their temple, yeah, like they did sample, and, and God just tore the daylights out of Dagon. Oh, yes, oh, yes. <laughs> you yes. know, if you'll read, if you'll read that in Kings. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, Dagon was one of God's favorite idols to tear up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he, he, he liked he liked to he liked to pull him in on the fight from time to time. Any anybody else? So let's uh, 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 let's take a look at our text real quick, and we'll jump right, jump right in. Judges sixteen twenty one through thirty one. Then the Philistines took him and put out his eyes and brought him down to Gaza. They bound him with bronze fetters and he became a grinder in the prison. However, the hair of his head began to grow again after he had been shaved. Now the lords of the Philistines gathered together to offer a great sacrifice to Dagon their God and to rejoice. And they said, Our God has delivered into our hands Samson, our enemy. When the people saw him, they praised their God, for they said, Our God has delivered into our hands our enemy, the destroyer of our land, and the one who multiplied our dead. So it happened when their hearts were merry that they said, Call for Samson, that he may perform for us. So they called for Samson from the prison, and he performed for them, and they stationed him between the pillars. Then Samson said to the lad who had held him by the hand, let me fill the pillars which support the temple so that I can lean on them. Now the temple was full of men and women. All the lords of the Philistines were there, about 3,000 men and women on the roof watching while Samson performed. Then Samson called to the Lord, saying, O Lord God, remember me, I pray. Strengthen me, I pray. Just this once, O God, that I may with one blow take vengeance on the Philistines for my two eyes. And Samson took hold of the two middle pillars which supported the temple, and he braced himself against them, one on his right and the other on his left. Then Samson said, Let me die with the Philistines. And he pushed with all his might, and the temple fell on the lords and all the people who were in it, so the dead that he killed in his death was more than he had killed in his life. And his brothers and all his father's household came down and took him and brought him up and buried him between Zorah and Ashtoreth in the tomb of his father Manoah. He had judged Israel 20 years. So we're going to look at, as, as, I, I, as I just mentioned, the road to restoration. The road to restoration. Huh? Well, one more thing. You know, I'll interrupt you no problem. I'm trying to teach this. But this is the first time, too, that we ever see that Samson had any, any brothers or sisters. Yes, right, uh, right. Wait, uh, the, the rest of the story, they're not mentioned until exactly. Samson's death. And that, says, that's right. And, and his brothers and all his father's household. <coughs> that, that, that's right, that's right. And that probably also uh, uh, was, was uh, yes, there could, there could have been brothers, but it also could be a, a, um, a, a, a racial statement about the people that the, the, they may consider the children of Israel, his brothers. I could be too. And so, so that's 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 a, that that's, a, that's a possibility yeah. too uh, <laughs> that 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 God's people were considered his brethren, uh, and all. So as we look as we looked at Samson in, in, the, in these these last few weeks, we see an arrogant man who is who is who is determined to do whatever he wants to do, and now we see where that kind of determination led him. Now we see a man that is bound. Now we see a man that is blind. Now we see a man that, that has, has brought to the point of humiliation in his life. What a picture in our life of what sin does to us. Sin binds us, sin blinds us, and sin ultimately leads us to, to uh, humiliation. It ultimately leads us to that place. It ultimately leads us to slavery, to the very thing that we think that we were in control of. 
slavery to the very desires of our hearts, slavery to the, to the enemy, slavery to those things. So as we look at, at Samson here in our text today, we, 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 we will notice right away some, some repercussions of what has happened. First of all, there was a lot of personal rep repercussions that we see with Samson. We see in him that not only, not, no longer is he strong, but he's both weak and humiliated. We see that he was not merely blinded, but that his eyes were bored out. In other, in other words, they wanted to make sure not only that he was blind, but that there was no possibility that he could, that he could see at all. So they had, they had bored his eyes out. That he was handicapped, handicapped and helpless. That he was hopeless. Uh, that, that, uh, that there was no real way out. That he was humiliated, as James pointed out. He was in the very same city that he had carried the gates off, the gates uh, of Gaza. You see, uh, he, and, and that he was, a, he was a slave. Sin is not merely separation from God and separation from God's will. Sin is slavery. Sin is that which binds us. Sin is that which, and, 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 and you know, I hate to say it, but I met <coughs> Christians that were bound. They were just, they were bound by, by sin. Because, because they allowed that little thing to get more and more in their life and a little thing to get more and more in their heart. And it might not be considered a, a big thing, but because they accommodated it, it become bondage to them. And before they know it, they shook themselves and the spirit had left them. They shook themselves and they found themselves in a, in a position where, where, they, uh, where they thought they would never be. Uh, not only was it personal repercussions, but there were some political repercussions as well. What position did Samson hold? He was the judge. He was the ruler of the people. What repercussions did that have on Israel now? Israel no longer has a covering. The 20 years of peace just came to an end. The Philistines was now fully in charge. The Philistines was now in control of, of, of the land and back in the place that they were 20 years earlier before Samson really stepped on the scene and began to do what he's doing. When we say, my sin's not hurting anybody, it's, it's a foolish statement because our sin had repercussions not just in our lives, but in the lives of our society, in our lives of our family, in the lives of those around about us. It has repercussions. Just as Samson's had a repercussion not only upon him, but upon all the people in his nation, all the people in the land. Uh, it had repercussions in the peace of the land. It was stripped away from them. Why? Because of Samson's great sin. It also had spiritual repercussions. When we as a representative of God sin and live, and live that sin out and the world sees it, they don't, they don't just mock us. They mock the God that we serve. They, they mock Christianity. They, oh, I knew there was nothing to that. You know, I knew, oh, they're just all hypocrites. You know, those, those kind of statements uh, in our life. So you had spiritual repercussions as well because they began to mock the, 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 uh, the God of Israel. And the problem with that is, 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 that, is that that's a very dangerous thing to do because as I, as I just mentioned, when we begin to mock God, we challenge God. We challenge the justice of God. We challenge uh, 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 God to act, especially when we begin to mock God as it's smaller than the gods that, that's, that's, that's around, smaller than mankind, smaller than those things. We see that in, in, the, in the struggle that ensues between Jehovah and Dagon. What, when did this happen? This happened during the sacrifice of Dagon. I believe God timed it where they went and got Samson to make a mockery of him right about the time of the sacrifice of Dagon. When Dagon was being exalted, when Dagon was being worshipped, where did this happen? This happened in the temple of Dagon. God would use this to not only uh, bring about a, a, a victory, even although it might have been just a, a, t a temporary victory, a victory God for God's people and a victory through Samson. He also made it as a testimony to all to see that Dagon is nothing. That Dagon has no power. That Dagon has no strength. And I'm approved by crumbling to bits everything that he that 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 that, that they have before. We see it in Egypt, don't we? 
the plagues that took place. If you if you go through and, and, and you go through and you look at the plagues, every one of the plagues is uh, was uh, could correlate with a god that they worshipped in e in e Egypt. And God came through, and every plague He was bringing shame to the very gods uh, gods of that of that place. God does not like idols, and He doesn't like them in our life as well. And God will contend with those idols. God will rise up against those idols. So we see that in Samson's life, that Samson, <clears throat> Samson really was in the middle of a fight between Jehovah God and this false god called Dagon and that God would, that God would bring, bring to pass. But one of the most powerful truths that we can see in our study tonight is, 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 is for, for we that are children of God. God can restore us even after a major fall, even after a fall that puts us to open shame, even after a fall that may put even God to shame. God is a God of grace, and that's what the Philistines didn't understand. They didn't understand mercy. They didn't understand the grace of God. It's one of the, it's one of the biggest characteristics of, of Judaism and of Christianity that distinguishes it from every religion on the world is we are the only ones that serve a God of grace. It, it, grace is not a concept that most religions take hold of. It's not a concept that most religions understand. They didn't understand it, and because they didn't understand it, they looked the other way, and they thought Samson was dealt with, while all the while, grace was at work. While all the while, mercy was happening. While all the while, God was beginning to bring Samson down the road of restoration. So we see, we see this morning a few things about, about uh, this restoration. The very first thing that we notice is the process of restoration. We see this process in the, in the life of Samson uh, uh, that we see here. I want you to notice that there was a process that had begun to, 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 happen, to start. This is, this is the verse that James referred to, verse number 22. However, the hair of his head began to grow again after it had been shaven. And as James says, it just, they just kind of drop it there and leave it, don't they? You know, I'm just going to leave this right here. And don't, you know, don't pay any mind to it. I believe it did have a, a very specific purpose, but I believe it was representing something uh, that was very different. I've heard, like I said last week, I've heard preachers preach that, oh, his, his strength was coming back. Samson didn't believe that was the case. Samson didn't say, well, my hair is, my, let me see how, you know, how much, how, how much how, if any of the locks is coming. He didn't sit and say that. Samson called out to God as his source. Samson said, you, Lord, has to strengthen me. You, Lord, have to anoint me. You see, to, to Samson, the hair was a non-issue right now. I believe that the mention of the hair here is to show us, is to represent restoration in his life. That which was shaven, that which was stripped away, that which the enemy had taken, had now begun to be restored, had now begun to, uh, to grow back. It is now begin to, 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 to take place in his life. So, so I think it's important for us to understand that I, I, I believe it represents for us the process of growth, the process of restoration. If we will let God, God will restore us. God will bring us back to that place where we need to be. First of all, we need to realize that this process of restoration is a gradual process. It's not something that takes place overnight. Yes, forgiveness is instant, but restoration takes time. And, when, and, and, and when we, and we need to realize that too because sometimes, sometimes we believe, well, I asked God to forgive me. Why hadn't everything changed? Because the process of restoration is a gradual process. Sometimes the wounds of sin has to be healed. Sometimes our disobedience has to be remedied. Sometimes these things take, take place in our life, and restoration takes a little while in our life. We can get impatient, and we can demand, Lord God, do it now, do it now. That's just not the way God brings restoration. And one of the things I noticed about this that I really liked, and it's a principle in our life, is that God restored Samson in a hard place, in a place of struggle, in a place of difficulty, in a place of torture. God restored him. While they were doing all these things to him, finally, Samson was letting God do something in him. Finally, the Samson syndrome was 
turned in reverse where not where he was not just saying god use me but he was crying out to god and finding that god was restoring him in, in the process in hard times let open your heart up to let god bring restoration in hard times let god challenge your heart in hard times, let God speak into that situation. Let God bring healing instead of anger and frustration and bitterness. And, and let God do that work in your life. It is a gradual process, but it is, it is a vital one. It is also a private process. Where did God put him? In prison. That's right. In, down in the, in, the, in, the, in the mill where you ground, the very private place for him. Uh, he didn't, they, there wasn't a work crew that was around him. They didn't need it because they felt, felt okay, here you go, Samson. Just get down here and, and, and work because all, he was just like an oxen that went around and around, grind, grinding, out, uh, grinding out the grain. I think there are times in our life that God takes, puts us to a place, in a place where he removes the distractions. He removes the things in our lives that, that are standing in the way of us really being healed. He removes the things in our life that stand. And that can be a devastating thing because for Samson, it required him to, to lose his freedom and to lose his eyesight. Samson was in darkness and Samson was in despair and Samson was left alone. The problem is they left this boy alone with God. And when you feel at your lowest point in, in, in your, your darkest area, as long as God is with you, as long as God is there, God will do a work in you. God will do a work through you. God will transform uh, your life and transform your heart. It, it's, a, it's a very powerful thing for us to realize that, that oftentimes restoration is a very private process. God will restore you, but you got to let him. God will restore you, but you got to cooperate. God will restore you, but you got to let, let him bring you through that process. Notice, notice it, it said that here in verse number 21. Then the Philistines took him and put it out of his eyes and brought him down to Gaza. They bound him with bronze feathers, and he became a grinder in the prison. So he was not just in the, in the mill part. He was in the prison part as well. So he was in a, he was in a very private place. And the, and the third thing that we notice about this process is that it is a, a loving process. Sometimes we miss that in the story of Samson. We miss the fact that God's love met him in that prison cell. That God's love met him in the, in the lowest point of his life. God didn't discard him. Although he shook himself and the spirit had departed, God did not forsake him. God did not leave him. God's love uh, was present there. You see, there's one distinction that we need to realize. There's a difference between judgment and correction. Judgment is what God does to the world, what he does for sin, what he does for these things. Correction has a different end goal. What is the end goal for correction? Restoration. God, God corrects his children so that we can be restored back to a, a position of usefulness. So that we can be restored back to a place where he in, intends for, us, uh, for us, us to be. You see, if we won't listen to God, he will shout in discipline. He will get our attention. He will bring correction to our life. The, the wise, one of the wisest men that, 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 ever, that ever lived uh, said this word, uh, said this about it, Proverbs 3, 11 through 12. He said, my son, do not despise the chastening of the Lord nor detest his correction. For whom the Lord loves, he corrects. Just as a father, the son, in whom he delights. What a beautiful picture there. We, we don't like the correction of God, but when we feel the correction of God, when God's correcting our life, we know a few things. First of all, God loves us. Because if he loves us, he'd correct us. And another thing is we realize that God delights in us. Even though we might be in a point in our life where we've messed up and we've stumbled and we've faltered, God corrects us. What was it? I think one of the Proverbs said that seven times a righteous man falls, but seven times a righteous man rises up. And so, so our failure is, is, is no sign that God doesn't love us. Our failure is no sign that God, you know, that, that God has left us, abandoned us, should I say, that he has abandoned us in our life. When God corrects us, it is a loving correction. None of us likes it. 
I didn't love it when my parents created me. Oh no. I didn't love I didn't love it, but I, I the older I get, the more I begin to realize they love me too much to let me raise myself. They love me too much to let me do my own thing. They loved me too much because they knew the, the, what the outcome would be for that. They were shaping me and molding me and, and showing that they loved me through their correction. God's the same way. So the correction that was happening to Samson was a loving correction. It was God working on his, on his life. He, the story of Samson could have stopped at, that, at verse 21. It could have stopped at the putting out of his eyes. It could have stopped there, period. And we would have moved on to the next judge. No, it didn't stop there. It, it, it continued in the loving correction of, of, of God in, in, in Samson's life. And then that, showed, then that reveals to us the point of restoration. What do you mean the point of restoration? I'm talking about the purpose and the timing of, of restoration that, that, that took place in, 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 in Samson's life. We need to un understand that those things are, 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 are crucial for, for us to, to grasp what was taking place in our life. You see, the purpose for restoration, I truly believe this, is to put in us what we lack. It's to put in us a character that, that is flawed. A better character than the one that's flawed. To put in us uh, uh, attitudes and spirits and, and things that we need to, to make to be restored. You see, you're going to see throughout Samson's life that, that, that it wasn't about the externals with Samson. God wasn't saying, okay, your hair is six inches long. Now you're ready to go. He didn't, he didn't leave it like that. The, the change that took place with Samson was not an external change. The change that took place in, in Samson was not a ritualistic change. The change that took place in Samson was primarily internal. It was about righteousness. It was about holiness. It's about having a right heart toward God uh, and, and, a, and, a, and, a right, and a right spirit toward God. That's the primary work that God wants to do in our lives. God wants to change us and change our hearts. He realizes if he changes our, our hearts, he can take care of the rest. He can use us. He can work through us. He can, he can, he can do great things um, among us. Uh, why? But he said, my, my primary thing is I want to I make a difference in you so that you don't suffer from the Samson syndrome uh, in your life. The very first point that we, that we see here uh, uh, of restoration is the point of brokenness in, in his life. When we look at Samson's prayer, we're filled with the insight of a, of a radical change of attitude in his life. We see a man that is truly broken. Let me tell you, uh, let me tell you, brokenness is, uh, is a, a prerequisite for restoration. Unless we know brokenness, we'll never know the depths of God's mercy. Unless we know brokenness, even salvation requires uh, an, an, uh, an attitude of repentance in our life. It's that brokenness. God it, it, it instills repentance in our life so that we can nurture an attitude of brokenness before God. Uh, it is a powerful tool that God uses in our life. Notice what it said. Notice, listen to this prayer of Samson. Then Samson called to the Lord, saying, O oh Lord God, remember me. Oh, what a different attitude, different tone than Samson had before. It was almost as like, I got a hot room with God. I just demand him to do what I want him to do. But now it's different. Lord, would you remember me? I pray, strengthen me, I pray, just this once. I, I like that. Oh, God, that I may with one blow take vengeance of the Philistines for my two eyes. As Hannah Park pointed out, even still some flesh that needed to be dealt with there. Still some attitudes that need to be dealt here. But the, for the first time, we begin to see a brokenness. For the first time, we begin to see God making a request. I mean, Samson making a request without any demands. He makes no demands of God here. He, it, is complete, it is completely throwing himself on God. We desperately need brokenness to no restoration uh, in, in our life. I think one of the problems why so many people don't see healing and restoration in their life is because they refuse to let God bring them to a point of brokenness. And if you have a lost loved one, pray for God to break them. Oh, that's, that, that's kind of rough, isn't it? No. That's the most beautiful thing you can pray for. 
Because unless we are broken in repentance, we'll never see him as we need to see him. We'll never understand him as we need to understand him. We'll never accept his gifts of grace until we realize uh, what, they, what they truly, truly mean. mean. You see, the, the next we, we see a, the point of dependency uh, as, as we see it in Samson. Uh, Samson realized that, that his strength was no longer his hair. Samson realized that he could no longer be the lone ranger in this thing, doing his own thing in his own way, but he realized that he needed God. If he was going to do what he needed to do, if he was going to accomplish anything more, it would be because God was on his side. He was a blind man stumbling around, being led about with the with hand of a child. He understood that if God's going to use me, it has to be God. It has to be him. It, it can't be in my own charisma. It can't be in my own style. It, it's got to be a dependency upon God. And I, and, I, and I noticed this too, which I think is quite interesting. It was at a point of intimacy with God. Samson, in, his, in, this, in this prayer, does something that is rather shocking coming from Samson. And we don't see it unless we look at this prayer in the Hebrew. When you look at it in the Hebrew, you'll notice something right away. In that one prayer, he uses three names for God. Three names for God. He uses the name Yahweh, which is basically uh, Yahweh, which is, uh, which is they, they, uh, the Hebrews took the, took the original name that God had given them and they took out, took out all the vowels uh, so that they wouldn't, by mistake, uh, 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 take the Lord's name in vain. They, that, that's how serious they were to it. So we kind of guess that the value is in the vowels in there now, and that's why we call Yahweh, which is Yahweh. This, that, that's, the, that's the name of God. And, and, but then he goes on a little farther, and, and he says, O oh Lord God, which is Adonai Yahweh, which means Lord Yahweh. He's declared him not only are you Jehovah God, but you are the Lord uh, in the situation. You are in control in the situation. I believe it shows a surrendered heart. I believe it shows that he finally realized that, that he wasn't the, the chief one. He wasn't the biggest thing. He wasn't the mightiest one. That he relied upon Adonai. And then there was Elohim. Elohim uh, is, is, a, is, a, is a word for God, which means mighty one. It means, it means creator. And an, an interesting thing about Elohim is Elohim is plural. So it's, it speaks of the Trinity of God. You see, we thought the Trinity was something that we, we come up with in the New Testament. No, there was hints of it all throughout the Old Testament, even in the name of God. He, uh, Elohim is considered plural. So, so he, what, what does this say to us? This say to us that in that time down there in prison, he learned a lot about God. He learned the natures of God. He learned the character of God. He learned the kindness of God. He learned the, he, he had an intimate relationship with God. That's the great thing about dark places. That's the great thing about bad, bad times in your life. You will learn more about God in the difficult seasons in your life than you will in the glorious seasons. You'll learn more about God in the valley than you will on the mountaintop. You'll learn more about God in the persecution and the trials and the tribulations than you ever will in, in, on, on a sunny day. Because we begin to turn and we begin to cry out to God. And it's in those times that we experience an intimacy with God that we never had. This was a profound statement by a man that was paid little attention to God before. Little attention to what, who God was, what God was. And it was, it, was, it was that point of intimacy in his life. And then there's something else I want you to notice. He came to a point of self-sacrifice. Samson never did anything for anyone but Samson. He was never willing to give up anything that did not specifically benefit him. But now Samson was saying, Lord, give me a chance to die for my people. Give me a chance to do one last thing, and I will, and, and you can, and you can, and in the process, you can take my life. There's a spiritual principle there. 
is that when we begin to be restored to God, we will learn to die to ourselves. We will learn to have this attitude that it's not about me anymore, Lord, it's about you. This attitude that we realize there's parts of ourselves that need to be crucified. There's parts of ourselves that need to be laid on the cross. It was a point of self-sacrifice that, that, was, that was proof positive that the change that was taking place in his life was happening. You want to see somebody that's been restored? Find somebody who's willing to give their all to God. Find somebody who's willing to say, Lord God, it's not about me, it's about you. Find someone who is going through this process of, of, of deep despair and you can find that self-sacrifice in you. And then, it was at the point of new beginnings in, in his life. Have you ever met somebody who, got, who went through something bad and they're still there? They're wallowing in their misery. They're wallowing in their pain. They're wallowing in their sins. You know, you talk to them and they used to be a part of church and say, oh no, I, I, I messed up. I, I, can, I, can never, I can never go back. Never go back to that. S Samson teaches us something. No matter how far we go, how far we fall, look up and reach for a gracious God. Look up and reach for a, a, a Lord. There is a new beginning that God wants for your life. There is a new beginning that God, God wants to bring. He cried out for another chance. And God is already always there to restore us when we're ready to be restored. You see, too often in our life we, we make we make standards for other people that says, you know, uh, you know that what they did was was too far gone. What they did was 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 was, was destructive. When what God wants us to do is really to turn uh, to Him. To Him reminds me of the, the statement by Winston Churchill that in the darkest days, when the Allied forces seemed to be losing in World War II. This is what he said. He said, this is not the end. It's not even the beginning of the end. But it's perhaps the end of the beginning. <laughs> we need that kind of attitude in our life that says, Lord God, help us. Help us to step into what's next for, for you, Lord God. Help us not to look behind us. Help us not to get discouraged by our situation, our circumstances. If you stumble, if you falter, John tells us, remember our study of John, he said we have an advocate with the Father, Christ Jesus. So we, we can turn we can turn to him. So the point of restoration is it's a point of brokenness. It's a point of dependency. It's a point of intimacy with God. It's a point of self-sacrifice where we, where we put ourselves on the altar before God. And it's a point of new beginnings in, in our life. And then finally, I want you to notice the power of restoration. The power of restoration in our life. You see, God's chastening is, is, is to profit us. God's chastening is to bring us to a point in our life where we are once again blessed. Where we're once again uh, 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 in God's favor. Where we're once again in a, in a position before God that he can use us and that he wants, wants to use us in, in, our, in our life. Although it's predominantly internal and it's work in our life, it will produce fruit around us. It will produce fruit through us. It will produce fruit in our life. So that's where, that's where we, we find Samson. When he's standing there with his hands against the columns, we see a man that's about to experience the power of restoration in his life. Notice, notice some, some of the powers of that restoration. First of all, it's power that will restore us to better than before. To better than before. Before notice what he said in verse uh, verse number uh, uh, thirty. Then Samson said, "Let me die with the Philistines." And he pushed with all his might, and the temple fell on the Lord's and all the people who were in it. So the dead that he killed at his death were more than he had killed in his life. Now there's some people that believe that once you stumble, once you falter, you can never get back to the point that you were before. That's not the gospel of the kingdom of God. That's not the way God works. God can take a dismal failure and, and turn their situations around to better than it was before. There's actually an old saying that says the bird with a broken wing can never fly as high again. But that's, that's not the way God works. We can be restored to a point that's even better than it was before. We can be restored to that point uh, in, in our life. There was an uh, uh, English... Uh, yes, sir. Uh, on that point... 
I feel like that's kind of a miraculous mark of God working in somebody's life because he's the only one that can bring you back from being better than you were before. Absolutely. Like, that doesn't happen anywhere else, really, you know, other than God. Perfect point. In the natural realm, that doesn't happen. In the natural realm, uh, you know, you mess up. You're not going to get the. You're not going to get a chance like that before. It, but but only God can produce that kind of miracle in, in us that will that will change us so very radically and change us. Uh, 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 that that is the miraculous thing of God. We need to we need to grab a hold of that. We need to say, uh, you know, and 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 in that we need to extend to others that belief. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes Christians are harder on Christians. Than anything. That's right. That's yeah, right. You're, and, you're down, then you, they kick them. <clears throat> yeah, we believe in forgiveness as long as it's me. <laughs> you know, but you know, if it's you, now that's that's a little different story. You know, yes. Well, in that you always have to remember, there but by the grace of God go on. That's right. That's right. That's right. No, nobody's above sin. That, that's right. We and we we have to we have to we have to constantly keep that in mind. Uh, I, I read the story of a, of an English evangelist that had a powerful ministry, and, and he fell into gross sin. And for years, he was out of the pulpit. For years, he was he was entangled in this sin. And and one day, he cried out to God and said, "Lord, what have I done? Forgive me." He saved him, and and while he was evangelizing back through, uh, uh, he, he got back in the pulpit. And he was evangelizing back through England. He had a guy that came in and he slipped him a note and he opened the note and he said, here's the details of what you've done. If you do not close this service down, I'm going to read this letter so everyone can know what you've done. And so the man fell on his knees in, front, in the front pew praying while the service was going on uh, and, and crying out to God. And when it was time for him to preach, he got up and he said, I've got something I want to read to you. And he read the entire account to that congregation. He said, every word of this is true. But what he's missed out is that the grace of God covered it all. The grace of God forgave me, washed my sins. And, and he went on preaching and the guy stormed out, 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 out of the building. We've got to believe that to be true. We've got to truly believe that to be true. And when we see a brother or sister in Christ stumble and falter, we, we need to be the first ones to say, here's my hand, let me help you up. Let me, let, I believe that God's grace can cover you too. I believe that God's grace can, can forgive you too. I believe that God's grace can do that work. You know, you'll be surprised that Christians don't, don't believe the gospel. <laughs> because if, if we believe what the gospel says, then we have to act on that gospel in ways in ways that, that extends the very grace of God. Remember God, God, uh, God used the parable of the, of, the, of the man that was forgiven a great debt uh, and the, the king that forgave him a great debt and, and he went back and he grabbed the guy by the throat and said give me what you owe me and the guy said I don't, I don't have it and he only, he only owed him a little bit and he threw him in prison. And then the king found out about him and he called him before him, for him and said, said, don't you know what you've been forgiven? He said, no. He said, now we're going to reverse that. And you're going to owe, uh, owe that again. What was he saying? He's saying that God has forgiven us such a great debt that we need to give that grace to others. We need to give that grace. You know. And none, none of us want to, want to talk about the life that we live. Talk about the times that we did things that we might be ashamed of. But God will, God's grace is, will, will make us better than we were before. And then, it, res, it restored fellowship. This is, this is where uh, James, you pointed out about the brothers, and, and, and I pointed out about the brothers. Uh, after his death, something wonderful happened. His family came in and took the body and brought it to an honorable place. What, what, was, what is that? That's, that to me says that, that he was restored, that he was restored back to a place of honor. He was restored back to the fellowship of, of the brethren. I think it was interesting that the Philistines said, had him. Just take him. 
He has been a thorn in our side. What Samson accomplished in a moment's time would take them years. Samson probably bought the children of Israel two or three good years more of peace. Why? Because all their leaders were dead. All their rulers were dead. They had to rebuild their entire political structure in, 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 in the Flist, in land of the Philistines because Samson has in one fell swoop wiped them all out. They were all in the same place and boom, it, it, it crushed them all up along with 3,000 onlookers uh, that, that, was, that was there with them. So we need to, we need to realize that, that, that they, just, they just handed him over, but I believe it was by God's providence because God, it was a sign that he had restored him back to his people. He restored him uh, back, back to God. They, his brothers and his father's household came down and 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 did and, 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 and did this. So so we need and then finally Samson's honor was restored. Now now uh, uh, yes Samson was buried back in the land of his calling. Yes Samson uh, Samson uh, did some terrible things, but there was an honor that was bestowed upon Samson that was better than his burial. There's an honor bestowed upon Samson that was better than all the honors that he received in his life. And it's the honor that Samson has found in Hebrews 11 in the Hall of Faith. He was honored by God in his word. Notice, notice what, what I, I, want you, I want you to notice what he said there. And what more shall I say, the writer said, for the time would fail me to tell you of Gideon and Barak and Samson and Jephthah. Also of David and Sam Samuel and the prophets, who through faith subdued kingdoms, worked righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of the weakness were made strong, became valiant in battle, turned to fight to flight the armies of the aliens. When it was all said and done, the New Testament honors him with this with this statement. It honors him with. Uh, you know, I've heard people say, you know, uh, uh, you know, S Samson, Samson, we'll never see Samson in heaven because you know Samson uh, 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 did, uh, killed himself. No, it was it was an act of war that he was that he was uh, he was imposing upon upon these enemy his enemies. I believe that this tells us heaven's final verdict on Samson. That Samson was a man of faith. That Samson was a man that God used. And then the, and the tail end of it, he was, he was, a, he was, a, he was a person that, that, that would get honored. I believe I'm a me. I don't know how easily I'll recognize him. He's, he's probably a scrawny little fellow. I, 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 still, I still believe that. I, believe, I don't believe that he had, had big muscles and, and I don't know, maybe he has his hair back. You know, maybe God, God has his hair. Maybe I'll recognize him because of the seven locks uh, that, 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 he, that, he, that he's walking, walking down the streets of gold with. I don't know how to recognize him, but I do believe that Samson is there. And, but I, I believe that Samson's probably biggest regret is if I'd only lived the way I died. If I'd only lived in the victory of not just being used of God, but having God work in me as well. If I would have just allowed the Samson syndrome to be reversed to where I'd have that balance in my life. See, I believe that one of the biggest lessons that we'll learn and we'll take away from this, from this it, it is simply this. Don't just let God work through you. Let God work in you. Because that's where the riches come. That's where the riches, riches will, will, be trans, will be translated in, in your life. So, Thank you. Thank you for being with us for Samson. Uh, uh, I, I thoroughly enjoyed some wonderful discussions, some wonderful, some wonderful things for us to dig into. Samson's life is just uh, is rich. It's rich with principles that we can learn from both good and bad, and we, and we can grow. Be back with us next week for our study in, in angels. Let me, uh, uh, Michelle, if you, anybody, if anybody wants the study sheet for, for, for next week, okay. Um, uh, we're going to be we're going to be taking a deep dive into.
into angels uh, uh, next week. Well, I couldn't help but think there when he when he oh, put yeah. down with the grinder, okay. they did one or two. Th there's one or two yeah. things. They either modified the grinder so a man could move it, mm -hmm. or he still had physical strength. Yeah, I, 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 and I highly doubt that they modified it so a man could easily push the grinder. I, 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 I think I think it was I think it was. Uh, Personally, I think it was it was it was more of a form of punishment for him, than it was a productivity for him. So he probably didn't have a full load of grain uh, to grain that, but it was just the humiliation of, of walking in circles all day and pushing that. And yeah, it wasn't easy. I'm sure it just it, it was it wasn't easy. Was there supernatural strength there? No, but uh, but uh, but uh, but, uh, but yeah, it was it was it was a tor it was a tormenting thing. Talking about having a bad job, just a bad job. When you're walking in circles uh, all the time that you're you're awake and your feet hurt and your back hurts and you can't see and and uh, and and I'm sure that every once in a while they came in with a whip and just motivated you. Well, just like the Israelites had to make the bricks. That's right. That's right. right? Without, without straw. Yeah, without <laughs> straw. It's just like oh my. I, when I think of that sometimes when I think of. Oh, Whatever I'm doing or a task, whatever I'm like, hey, you're not a slave oh, like mm -hmm. the Israelites. Were. You, know, right, you, have, you right. live in a land. Am I recording? Uh, stuff I don't oh, appreciate myself uh -huh. going on politically, but a like, land of God put us here with freedom. That you do, and that you do that feature at the end of the city. Yeah. 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 You know how we can kind of get 